Greetings folks. Today we're going to look at seven segment displays. Ta-da! In other words, one of those guys. So our seven segment displays is really just seven LEDs arranged in this configuration and probably an eighth one for a decimal point. And typically they are uh, indicated with letters, segments A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then of course the decimal point if we have it down there. Now, these are available in either common anode or common cathode configurations. So a common anode looks like this. You have a bunch of LEDs, sort of in a sequence like this, right? The, the anodes are common for all of them. So what you would normally do is connect up uh, little current limiting resistors to these things, right? You would wire them in, and then these ends here would go to the port pins on your controller. Okay, so what we would like to do here is take seven or possibly eight pins and control those off of one port, one 8-bit port. The trick is, what if I have several of these uh, displays? Do I need one for each port? All right, that's the real question. Um, well, the first thing I want to look at is how we would configure this to be lit up. In other words, if we were to take our um, display and we say, okay, we've got to wire it up. Question is, how do I wire it up? In other words, which one of these pins um, is going to go to port zero? Which one of them is going to go to port five and, you know, port pin five? Well, one way to do it and there's you know, nothing magic about this, but just to be consistent with the way they're lettered, we could just say, well, I'll go from most significant bit down to least significant bit going ar around ABC. So this would be bit seven, bit six, bit five, four, three, two, one, and then bit zero would be the decimal point if we're going to use it. Okay. So if I want to light up a certain pattern, I just have to have the appropriate signals on the various pins, right? The various LED pins. So for example, if we want to make a, uh, a zero, you know, we just need to light up the outside units. In other words, I need this. Oops, not that. Right, we just need the outside. I don't need the, the center. Uh, number one, okay, the, the G segment, if you will. Okay, now if I was um, going to set that up, so this is, uh, let's call it the numeral zero. All of those need to be lit. Now, I can think of each one of those bits as either being an, an on or an off value. And we can configure this in either what's called active high or active low. So if I were to do active high, what we wind up with is a bit pattern that looks like this, right? 7654, that's the first nibble. And then we have um, the, the remaining couple of bits here, the three and the two. And then, of course, 1 and 0, right? They're not lit. So you get 0, 0 out of that. Now, um, we could also configure this for an active low. And actually, it turns out with uh, a common anode, that's kind of convenient. If we had common cathode, of course, it'd be all tied together here, and we'd have individual items out there. So driving those high would make sense. In this case, pulling these low makes sense. So an active low is just a complement of this. Right, wherever there's ones, there's zeros. Wherever there were uh, zeros, there's ones. 
All right, so that's your, your binary pattern, or we could say in hex, all right? That's just a hex three. So I could set up my port to produce that value, right? Now, if I wanted the next numeral, right, if I want a one, I'll just kind of do these lightly out here. I need this guy and this guy, and then these other ones are off, right? That look nice. Okay, so what do I have in this case? Well, we've got six and five, right? Those are the two that are being lit. So same deal. If I'm going to use active high, that's going to be a zero. One, one, zero for the top nibble. Everybody else is off. And if we're going to use an active low, we just flip everything, right? All right, so that's going to equal a hex 9f. And I could continue along for this, right? So that's 0, 1, do the same thing for a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, and so far. Um, up to nine. And, and what would probably be a sensible thing would be to uh, maybe create an array of unsigned characters here. And maybe I'll call it numerals, right? And I'll just put these values in here. So I'm going to continue along with our active low implementation. So the zeroth position would be x03, and then the next one, x9f, and so on and so on, until we fill out all of those. Okay? All right. So here's what we wind up doing. If your controller is sitting out like this, right? so here's your Arduino Uno, for example. And I would take, let's say, port D. Right, so that's 8 bits. And I wire this up. So bit 7 goes to segment A, and bit uh, 6 goes to segment B, and so on and so forth. Then, all I have to do is stick 5 volts out here, right, on the common. So then, as an active low, the pin goes low that creates the completed path in other words for an individual led we would see five volts the led uh, current limiting resistor and then of course the port would be going to ground so that would complete the circuit okay well you get your led would light up everybody's happy when the uh, uh, Port pin happens to go high, right? So this point is going to be at plus five. You got plus five, plus five. There's no current flow. LED is off. All right, so this works out really well for this active law. That's fine for one segment, or uh, excuse me, one display. And all I, all I really have to do here is just say something like this. Port D gets you know, whatever that number happens to be. And if I want to put a zero in there, I would just say it's numeral zero. So this, I could make a variable, you know, numerals X, where X is the digit that I want displayed, you know, a seven, a 10. As long as I put them all in order, zero, one, two, three, and so forth, that's all I have to do. It's just like a little, kind of like a miniature lookup table, okay? Beautiful. Done. Now I say, well, what if I want two, three, four, five digits? How do I do that? Well, you know, you could have one port per. Um, so if I had three digits, I'd need three ports. That's in some ways convenient, but in other ways, it's a little clunky because now you have to dedicate a port just for one thing. Um, and you may not have enough, right? I mean, an Uno only has three ports, and you, in fact, don't have eight pins on every port. 
So what do we do? Well, what we do to get around this is to multiplex. We do a time domain multiplex. What does that mean, time domain multiplex? It means I light up a digit for a short period of time, a few milliseconds. I light up the next digit, same thing. Light up the third digit, and I just keep doing that over and over and over and over again. So I have three digits. They're all going to be controlled by the same Uno. I'm going to just run with port D over here. So you got your eight pins. I'm not drawing the current limiting resistors, but obviously they would have to be in there. So I have my eight displays, right? And I'm just going to kind of draw this straight through. It's like they're in parallel, basically. So uh, ones digit, tens digit, hundreds digit as an example. Now, if you just set it up exactly like this, then you would see, um, for example, your ones digit Right, you'd see it three times. And then you would see the tens digit three times. Then you'd see the hundreds digit three times. So if you had a number like uh, 741, what you would see would be 111, and then 444, and then 777. Right? That's obviously not very useful. So there, there's got to be a way where we can, for example, put the one out here, blank these two, then put the four here, blank these two, and put the seven here and blank these two. If we can cycle it fast enough, we won't see them flashing. Now, what's fast enough? Well, this is the same trick we use with television and video and, and film. Fast enough basically means if you can get this thing done in say 20 or 30 milliseconds, your eye is gonna integrate it and it's gonna look like there's no flashing. Okay, so your eye is going to sort of give you the average value, and it won't appear that it's flashing. Now, if you're watching video, typically that's 30 frames per second, so there's literally like 30 individual pictures being flashed up on the screen. But you don't see it as 30 individual pictures. It's fast enough that it sort of blurs together, and you get the illusion of continuous motion. And that's what we're going to do here. Okay? So I need something to cycle through these. And what we're going to do is use another port. So I could, for example, use port B and use some transistors to turn on these individual uh, displays. All right? So, for example, up here, I'm just going to put in a little PNP transistor. And the emitter is going to go up to the positive power supply. And then collector comes down to the power pin on that display. So what's going to happen is, if you notice, because they have a PNP, this is an active low configuration. When this uh, pin on port B is high, this is off. So it doesn't matter what's coming out of port D. This is off, blank. When I drag this low, we pull current through the base. That turns on the transistor and it allows current to come down through here. And then the appropriate segments will be lit depending on what the value of port D is. And I'll just replicate this idea for these other two. These are each going to get their own bit. So, we assert this digit that turns off these two, and, you know, the hundreds comes out, or seven. Then we would assert this second one down here, he turns on, these turn off, we get the four. Finally, the lowest bit, we assert this one, this one turns on, these two are off, we get the one, seven, four, one, seven, four. Or you could do it in reverse order, one, four, seven, doesn't really make any difference. And we would keep that on for maybe 5 milliseconds, 10 milliseconds probably at the most, for each one of these. So if I was used to use, using 5, that would be a 15 millisecond cycle time on there. Okay? And it'll appear like it's just 741. So I have to continually rewrite the value on port D. This is a disadvantage. You know, if I have a dedicated system like this, I can blast the value into port D and be done with it. 
right? Because after all, there's a latch out here. So we can put the number out, go off and do other things. And only when I need to update it, in other words, change the digit, do I have to rewrite this. It just stays there. In this case, we have constant attention, right? We're constantly having to refresh this thing. 147, 147, 147. So that is a downside. Um, that's time we might be able to use for something else. Right? So a simple implementation, a simple implementation of this would be just to use a delay function to hold that five milliseconds. This actually is a, a good candidate for um, interrupt driven code, where we can use one of the internal timers to update this for us. And then we can go off and do our main code, something entirely different. So we're going to take a look at interrupts down the road. And in the meantime, this is a, uh, a simple way of setting it up. And we can see uh, exactly how it works. Three digits. Off we go.